uh, I'm happy that it's been situated within context, because the question is, who would you trust in times of crisis? Dr. Bamiya makes the claim that there were two crises, and that we shouldn't distinguish the crisis, because both were crises. He says that the NDC crisis and the MPP crisis. Internally, he, internally he, generated, and he, one that is, you know, a global uh, unforeseen, you know, intervention. So if you have your hydro drums dry, it cannot be internally generated. That's a fact. And everybody watching can tell you that if you have your hydro drums producing just about 30%, then it cannot be internally generated because you cannot predict precisely how your dams are going to dry. That is one. Two, if you have the fracturing of the West African gas pipeline, which supplies you with fuel, with the anchor of a ship, I don't know how an economist can come to the conclusion that you knew that that was going to happen and that you should have taken some measures. Your dam drying up because of uh, unpredictable you know, weather or rain has become sort of a ritual. And so you should be able to make that prediction. I'm giving you two. And, so, and, 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 make, and make provision for when it happens. Yes, I'm giving unlike, you. Unlike corona, you can't. I'm giving you two. I'm saying that one, if your dams dry up, it's an external force, that's one. Two, if there is a fraction of your pipeline beneath the sea by a ship, I don't know how you could have anticipated that mm. in order to deal with that. Okay. The most important thing is that when you are faced with a crisis or a situation, you have to take pragmatic steps to deal with that. And anybody who has done some level of energy economics will tell you that it takes about three years to get the necessary equipment in order to forestall whatever challenges you had. And like I've said, we had three major challenges when President Mahama took over as president. Mm. One was the issue of generation, two was the issue of financing, and three was the issue of fuel. Mm. And so the question you ask yourself is, how did you approach it? How did you deal with that? You and I know that the fuel issue was comprehensively dealt with, was the uh, actual gas processing plant. Today, it saves us about $350 million per annum in terms of input substitution. That is far thinking. That is forward thinking. That is dealing with the root cause of the challenge and not just dealing with palliative measures. And so that is highly commendable. So that fuel issue is a major, major step that President Mahama took. The other issue has to do with the generation itself. And I maintain that when President Mahama took over, and I have a document from the Energy Commission which I'll refer to if it becomes necessary. If you were to have all the money, if you were to have all the fuel, at the time he took over in 2013, there was no way you could generate enough because the install capacity, and you don't even work with install capacity, but let me just deal with install capacity, was less than our projected peak demand. The install capacity was 2,200 at that time. Our projected peak demand was 3,000. So even if you were to fire all the thermal plants at that time, you simply will have a deficit. What it meant is that you needed some complementality in terms of additional thermal plants. And he head on dealt with it comprehensively to extend that today we have enough capacity and with enough to export. I'm surprised that we are not exporting power. I think that by now we should be exporting more than we are doing. Mm. Then the third one. Because that was part of the plan. Yes, that okay. was part of the plan. And we have started a program with Ajan France de Development on the balance sheet of Gridco to export 200 megawatts to Burkina by now. That program was stalled because their financials deteriorated from 2017, 18, and 19. And I'll have the records here. Mm. So the third one has to do with the financing issue. But shouldn't you know, exportation of power be rather on the basis of source that is cheaper, hydro rather than thermal? No, you do a mix, okay. a weighted mix. And I can tell you that Ghana is the third cheapest in the sub-region. I have the documents here. Okay, proceed. I have a 2019 report from the African Development Bank. Okay, you, that you are did going an to analysis, point. And yeah. I can do that for you. Okay. And so this issue of Ghana's power is the most expensive, as was being touted. It's flawed. The evidence is here, and I can refer to it if they challenge me. The third one has to do with the finance. Because even if you have the fuel, even if you have the thermal plants, and you don't put your utilities on a good pedestal in terms of their financial capability, you are simply going to go back to this situation. And so we have to come out with the energy sector levies. And today, I'm happy that Gideon and Co are getting about three to four billion annually 
Indeed, when we were handing over, we left money in the account. We had paid about one billion of that facility. It became a big issue, and everybody watching would attest. Then when we came with that levy, the MPP criticized us and stated that, look, it was a very nuisance tax, and promised that they would abolish it upon assumption of office. We're going to refer to that as well. Today, we know that they've not just maintained it, they've increased it. And so you are dealing with the financing, you are dealing with the fueling, and you are dealing with the capacity issues. And by the time